All right, let's get into this now. A cholera outbreak has taken the lives of more than 30 people. An economy that's expected to grow at a meagre 0.3% in 2023 is taking a pounding over indecision about whether or not the South African government will allow Russia's president to attend a BRICS summit in August. Let's remind you that Vladimir Putin is indicted by the International Criminal Court for what it says are war crimes committed in Ukraine. Add to that a governance record which continues to eat away at the ANC's credibility as it faces an election dubbed a 2024, which will be our 1994. Well, joining me now to discuss the party's plans to navigate these choppy waters is uh, the party's Secretary General, Figele Mbalula. Secretary General, thank you very much for making the time. Let's start with um, what I'd like to call matters arising. The police are investigating, in fact, they've opened an inquest docket on Tina Jumat Peterson's death. Are you concerned that there may have been foul play? Uh, thank you for having us, Koli. Um, the police are doing the right thing. Uh, which is permissible in terms of the law. Um, so we believe as the ANC that let uh, the law be allowed to take its course and uh, without uh, any hindrance. And uh, uh, in circumstances like those, we are educated that uh, an inquest is opened, especially when there is death involved. So uh, that uh, is an important piece of work by the law enforcement. Have you had a conversation with uh, your two party members who are also members of parliament? I'm talking about Mr. Gianchi, I'm talking about Ms. Machodina. This relates to their accusations that they may have been involved in what the suspended public protector says is an extortion racket. Have you had a conversation with them about the allegations leveled against them? We have had a conversation through the Secretary General, writing and asking them to account right from the onset when M. Ziligazi made those allegations. Uh, we have had a, a contact with them, including the late Dina Jumat. Mm -hmm. um, the two have uh, since made a submission to the Secretary General denying all the allegations uh, before the passing and after the passing of Comrade Dina in writing and verbally, and uh, Comrade Dina, unfortunately, we could not uh, retrieve any response. And uh, uh, we were then, uh, we had this uh, uh, unfortunate encounter, in a lack of better words, of death, uh, whilst we're dealing with the matter with her. I can't resist the question, particularly from the governing party, as leveled by the suspended public protector that the, the death of Tina Jomart Peterson should be shouldered by the government, the judiciary of this part of this country, including um, national parliament. What do you make of those comments? Uh, unless if she has got uh, finer details of how she arrived at that particular conclusion, uh, nobody should shoulder any death of anyone if you don't have empirical and impeccable evidence on the table that make you to come to that particular determination. And in this particular instance, we can only be guided by uh, the prescripts of the law, mm. that uh, there is credible investigation on the table that come to a conclusion that implicate the ruling party in the death of somebody or any other way. So uh, to cut things before, you know, uh, they bear anything, it is quite unfortunate on the part of a learned friend, an educated person like the public protector, mm. uh, to be ahead of uh, everything else. So it says a lot about her. What does it say? A law uh, abiding citizen, a law practitioner, knows what needs to be done before you open your mouth about such matters. So in this particular instance, she's a judge, she's an investigator, she's a prosecutor, and making a determination about a whole lot of things that we are not aware of. We don't know what killed Comrade Dina. 
We see people making all sorts of allegations. We respect the family. We respect law enforcement. And uh, we want to say to them, do what is at uh, your best to come to the determination of what happened. Yeah. And we respect the privacy that the family asks us to observe uh, and give them the privacy and the respect uh, in terms of the passing on of Comrade Dina. So we respect that. What do you make of the legal fight which has become very public between Eastern Cape Premier Oscar Mabuyane and his boss, President Sir Ramaphosa? There's an issue of an individual and a, a public representative. There's an issue of an individual in relation to integrity of a person. Uh, and what are the rights of an individual in relation to that? And uh, Mabuyani, I see him in this case as an individual. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that is conflated with his responsibilities as a public representative. And in this particular instance, he will ask a pertinent question. What should I do when I think that uh, my integrity is impugned? What is before me to defend myself? And that is the law. That's what is exhausting. So in this particular instance, that will put him in collusion with the president. And in this particular instance, does the law say no to that? It doesn't. And uh, because the law, what it teaches us is that it will be harsh if you acted ignorantly on the defense of your own integrity at the expense of everything. So, Mabiyani have got all the right to do what he's doing, mm -hmm. uh, as long as uh, he does that within uh, the ambit of the law, in terms of uh, explaining himself and what he thinks will impact on his integrity as a person. In an environment where accountability is hard to come by, does this worry you that what he has subsequently done, which is to run to court, obtain an interdict to say to the SIU, stop investigating me, does that open the door for those who want to shield themselves from accounting? You know, the law will punish you for ignorance and failure to act in your own defense in this country. A president of the country said, I want my day in court. And then uh, when he's in court and he defends himself and exhausts all the rights in terms of the law, here comes the bookish people, well-educated, and the learned friend that he's delaying his day in court. Now, Mabuyani he is actually preventing that to fight in future when you could have done at the beginning. So I'm not here in any way defending Mabuyani. And all what I'm saying is that let's allow the processes to be exhausted, reach their finality, and then we can talk. At what and point? then uh, we, we, we must not run a narrative alongside the judiciary process that is unfolding. Because any way and means to seek to do that is to basically to interfere with the processes of uh, the law that are actually unfolding. And therefore, it doesn't say in any event that an individual ceases to be an individual to defend their integrity uh, simply because they are at the helm of the state uh, institutions. They've got the right to defend themselves if they believe they are innocent. And all what we should do is to observe that process to its finality. Any means outside that, it's a kangaroo process. We should not be... Allowed. It has brought us to where we are today with all political things around cases like President Zuma because a group of journalists met and made a determination to attack an individual, which they were not supposed to, and then uh, had an off-the-record briefing uh, over a matter that they were not supposed to. So leave the Mabuyani case. We have suffered blows. We have suffered a lot in terms of the integrity of the judiciary being questioned and all of that as a result of those cases. Are we not learning? We should learn better. Allow the man to defend himself in the, pre in the context of the law. And then uh, when all is said and done, we can then talk. 
mm. when uh, he has failed to do so. Because if he sit back, he does not exhaust all the options that the law provides for him to execute. At then what point? who will then stand for him at the end of the day? Nobody. At what point do party processes kick in? The party processes will kick in as and when the law uh, reach its finality on the matter. If ever Mabuyan is found guilty and uh, or otherwise to be on the wrong side of the law, the ANC won't hesitate. To All right. Act. Well, that helps us then move along to the matter that this morning we are reporting on, and that is that the ANC once again deciding to use the courts, as you've just said, to challenge a matter that the Democratic Alliance says was thoroughly exhausted in your um, latest challenge. You handing over CADA deployment minutes to the Democratic Alliance. On what basis are you going back to court on that? I will not want to exhaust that at the present moment. We defend our right to deploy as a policy of our party world over parties that win elections mm. uh, decide who must serve where in terms of fulfilling the manifesto implementation of that party including the democratic alliance mm. they are playing politics they are playing to the law we will exhaust the processes of the law to defend our policy if we lose we lose we respect the judgment of the courts and all of that but at the end of the day nobody can say a governing party anywhere, including democracies that have come before us, have got no right to deploy their own cadres to the front to fulfill the implementation of what the masses have accorded to that particular political party. We're coming South to Africa that. is no exception to that. We're coming to that. What I'm asking is, on what basis are you saying to the court, we are here once again. They've just rejected you and gave you a deadline to hand over the documents. You are once again saying that you want to go to, back to the same courts. Perhaps the a question should be slightly different. Are there minutes to begin with? Uh, Goli, you want me to exhaust a matter that is before the court and uh, that we are defending? We have lost we respect the outcome of the court. We are appealing. Listen to the court. The papers will be public, and then you can read from there. Our defense strategy in terms of this is a matter between us and uh, our lawyers and uh, in terms of the court. I, so I'm not, I'm not you will be private. General. You will be private to that. Now, yeah. if you, you put me on the court roll and then you make me a defendant yeah. in a court of public judgment, it is wrong. And I'm saying to you, understand this principle. We've got the right as the ruling party to make a determination about who goes where I'm simply in relation the of the deployment policy of the ANC. That I'm is simply, the policy we are defending. I'm simply asking the question, Secretary General. Yes. I'm simply asking the question. Great. Do the so-called minutes exist? It's not a question of whether minutes exist or don't. It's a matter that we're arguing before the courts. You know, we have addressed this issue extensively before the Zondo Commission. And there was doubt and there then, at some point. And there then, was doubt there at listen, some point listen, as to the there existence was leak, of there these was, minutes. There was leakage. There was presentation. They ran a court of public opinion on the matter. And the issue is out there. Whether they are minutes or not, those things were leaked to the public. Today, you come here, you act like as if you have never seen them, you have never read about them. You unfairly want to subject me now as the ANC to be in the courtroom at newsroom right at nine past something, uh, not ten past four, at nine past something minutes in the morning. Boom, Polly comes to me. Do you have the minutes or not? There was Zondo Commission. Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of the ANC, gave an account mm. to the nation and to the commission about our deployment policy. And the DA decided to take us to court because they play politics. We defend our policy in court. Allow us to do that. Okay. I'm not going to place any more time on that because I think we also know that at some point the, the, the president was caught off guard 
much like it did uh, at the time that he made an announcement during a state visit. But let, let me not go there. Let's talk he about... not caught off guard. Let, let's talk about the governance matters, Secretary General. Corruption and maladministration continues to be a problem, in particular, at local government. I suppose the reason why I'm cascading down from CADA deployment is to ask you the question, are you ready to admit that CADA deployment has simply failed you as a governing party? CADA deployment has not failed us as a governing party. If I can give you examples of performance per excellence within the state, the performing director generals uh, within the state, uh, the performing CEOs within some entities of the state and everywhere else, uh, you will see that uh, CADA development uh, played a critical role and there are certain individuals which have executed and performed ex uh, extremely well uh, in terms of their areas uh, of development. Uh, Examples of, of excellence? There are many I can give you, uh, a plethora of them, and I don't wish to single out. But uh, you are questioning me about uh, the issue of CADA develop, uh, deployment that it has failed at the local government. Local government is actually won by parties uh, in terms of political leadership provided at local government. Local government uh, in the last election produced uh, a number of hung municipalities which have given us coalition governments. Uh, different models that have actually been implemented have worked against our objectives in terms of delivery. We have lost power for the past 10 years in some of the municipalities, Pretoria, Johannesburg, uh, Eguruleni, and the metro in the Eastern Cape. So you will see the, the impact of our municipalities and coalitions, the role they've played in terms of uh, executing the in plan fairness. of uh, in fairness, uh, uh, deployment. In fairness, in fairness. I, I have to disagree with you vehemently here. 2016 was the introduction of the so-called coalitions in South Africa. Before then, there was a very clear majority, and that majority ran municipalities that were governed by the ANC. And I'm saying to you, the cholera outbreak that's taking place in Swan, if you are honest, is that not a clear enough example of CADA deployment that has failed not just you, the ANC, but has now failed the people of South Africa? Um, let's take it back. Let's come to Johannesburg, the city. You are correct. 2016 is the date and the appointment we've got. Hmm. Amos Masondo. What a wild development we had. No corruption. Audit clean uh, in the city of Johannesburg. No potholes. ANC in governance. Changing lives, building roads, uh, doing what we can in terms of Soweto, as an example. Pakistan, what a wonderful performance in terms of the ANC being in charge. Cater deployment, city managers performing to the best of their ability. Zilch uh, corruption. Boom 2016. Coalition governments. And all of that no. are introduced. No. Go to Twan. Yeah, like go to Twan no, before no, 2016. No, 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 go to Twan no, before let's 2016. Come, let's, come, let's come to Twan. Mm -hmm. Twan is even worse for you. Let, I've got bad news for you when yes. it comes to Twan. Sputla Ramkhopa. Before Sputla Ramkhopa, Gwen Ramkhopa, we introduced a number of things in terms of development and uplifting our communities. For the first time in this country, we bring Wi-Fi to the streets of the townships. Great development in the different townships in Tswani and all of that. There comes the DA coalition. We are taken out, despite the fact that we won, but not outrightly. Sputla is out of power. We lose Tswani to the DA 
the DA has been in power there for now seven years in charge. They still sing the song of the ANC. Again, if, I said to you. Let me say to you, uh, let me say to you, this rhetoric that uh, problems began with us, what did the DA do to reverse the situation of Hamas crowd? Let's say it is the ANC. Seven years. If, if you're being fair. Tell if me. If you're being fair. Three mayors. Three mayors. 2004 changing. was the start of the mess that is now the Royval project. 2004. This is when warnings and red lights are being, uh, are being sounded to say there's a problem there. That is ignored. And it continues. Secretary General, I'm saying to you, be fair if you are honest about accounting to the people of South Africa. I am you, very will fair. Say, you will say I am very that fair. the Democratic Alliance, don't cut yes, short. yes, it has governed that city. And I don't hear, I'm not going to speak for them here, but they have not governed alone, much like the ANC did before I, I, 2016. I, I wish I could be the DA that I sit and the presenter speaks for me even if I'm not <laughs> in the show. I wish I could You're be putting words in my mouth. But uh, since of incumbency, let's talk about them. What the ANC have inherited mm. and what the ANC has failed. We have never failed to admit our yeah. mistakes. Okay. And that is why our manifesto even speaks to that. Okay. The reason why people voted us and gave us 57% is because we're honest with them. So, clearly, don't educate me and lecture me about honesty. We are honest to the people of South Africa. And, and that is why we even established the Zondo Commission, admitted that there was something amiss with us. Don't lecture me about that. Okay. Today, I will be the first to say to you, yes, there are things that have been raised about Roy Falk or whatever, in terms of Hamas Kran. We have said to our deployees, deal with that. We are told that there was money allocated, and that money went down the drain. Names of people and companies are thrown around. The ANC will never defend corruption, not this ANC, from what we have learned from. And we are saying to you, Goli, that let those, if there's anything that has actually happened there, law take its course, strengthen the law to deal with the perpetrators. Okay. Then... All I'm saying to you is that, with that said, who is in charge? Is it me or Silas? So let is me... it me or Mukhalakwen? Is it me or this guy who's the DA leader here in Johannesburg who has been in charge? And how did they leave Tswani, the city? And look at the townships, how they've deteriorated. Look at what is happening in Tswani in terms of filth and dead. It never happened, surely, with all our failures. All right. Under our watch. It didn't. Here's and I'm my, not uh, claiming easy victories. This is what happened. Here's my, here's my uh, conclusion of this matter. Surely it's got to be a sore point for the ANC when the Auditor General, for the second time in a row, is going to come back and say the province that produces the most amount of clean audit reports is the Western Cape. What's happening in the rest of the provinces? And who is running those provinces? And of course, those municipalities. Tim Bing Karimeng has presented a solid uh, uh, program in terms of reversing a non performance with regard to clean audit, not just clean audit, but uh, unqualified audits in uh, different municipalities. Of course, we look at the Western Cape and their model. Uh, in terms of how they succeed in terms of producing clean audits. And uh, uh, it is important that must be replicated. And uh, there are some of our municipalities uh, which were in charge, which, where the ANC was in charge, even in a coalition for the past five years, like a guru lane, we produced clean audits there. Why is it not uh, possible for others? Instability of leadership, like it happens in in, in Mangao, uh, that gives an account of why these clean audits and uh, uh, you know lack of good financial performance is not realizable. All right, let's take a break. When we return, we we'll pick up on matters involving 
the economy. Mr. Mbalula, let me thank you very much for uh, staying on. Let's um, discuss now the economy. Does it make sense to you for an economy that is expected to grow at a meager 0.3% in 2023, that economy is held hostage by indecision over whether or not to allow the Russian president to attend a BRICS summit in August? Uh, there is very good news in terms of our economy uh, this morning. Uh, I read that uh, the consumer inflation has slowed to 6.3 percent, of course, outside the bracket of the six to three to six percent of uh, the Reserve Bank of South Africa. The target range. Yes, that is that tells you that uh, there are sparkles of good out of our economy. Just a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. against that, as A told us about uh, 0.4 percent uh, of uh, GDP. Uh, growth in terms of our economy and uh, that on its own tells you that uh, the economy is responding well and I normally say to people that if the ANC were to lose power next year those who will come in will look like that uh, they are the best brains South Africa has ever produced um, because they would have never seen COVID-19 they would have never seen the riots they would have never seen all these negatives uh, that have slowed down our growth and our response as the economy. Now, Vladimir Putin, there's no indecision there. Can I just... There's no quickly? indecision Can there. I just come in quickly before you go to Mr. Putin? <sighs> Secretary General, I've got to tell you as well that observers of this economy have said for the past 10 to 15 years that the economy of South Africa has been growing but at pedestrian growth. That means it's not growing at the pace that the country would want it to so that it can create jobs. So you can't celebrate a cooling inflation. I'm not just celebrating. Okay. I'm just giving you good news that you never tell. <laughs> I've been telling about no, it since the, morning. I, I My don't, colleagues have been telling I, I, I about don't it know. Morning. When I see you, I just see bad. So <laughs> let, let, let me just say that because you, you are the bearer of bad news all the time. But nonetheless, let me say, hmm. I've never said and I will never say with this, it means we are on track. That will be against Amilcar Cabral. All what I'm saying is that I will be the first, the ANC will be the first to, to admit that our economy has not been responding at the pace we want it to yeah. because of a number of challenges that we are facing. And that is why we then talked about social compact. But that social compact mm. in itself, you're looking at the pen and the paper signed between business, labor and government, but government has now implemented um, a sectoral approach to social compact. You do looking at different sectors that are performing and then they lock into an agreement uh, in terms of consolidating the social compact. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm saying, Goli, uh, to the extent that will arrive at the holistic social compact is what government needs to negotiate right. and get into with business as well as labor. Uh, to realize a social compact holistically for the country. All right. I interrupted your thought process around President Putin. Um, I don't know what you want about President Putin, but you talk about the war. And I'm saying that we've got a position and a stance against the war. We are against the war. We don't want the war. We are not pro-Russia in terms of this war, as others have actually said. We are not. That's not my question. Uh, it's not your question, but I'm talking for those when it comes to this matter, say we risk jeopardizing the economy because we are delinquents, we are children of Putin, we are pro-Russia and all of that. That's not the case. From the onset, we said we are non-aligned. And uh, notwithstanding the fact that the UN Charter guide us that... Uh, 
we must respect territorial integrity and sovereignty of nations. We support that. Uh, when others say this invasion is unfair on Ukraine and all of that, we set all parties to the table and dialogue and sort out the murmurings and the dissatisfaction of Russia yeah. with regard to NATO and all of that. This thing does not warrant a, a nation to go to war and invade another country. So let there be talks on this particular matter. So and then others came and said that, no, we will defend Ukraine, we'll supply weapons and work against Russia, which is what is happening right now. Now, how does South Africa uh, respond to this particular matter? We've got to act with others and then unleash shuttle diplomacy to assist us to unlock the potential out of this mess. Yeah. It's a mess that we need to get out of and then uh, uh, bring a resolve uh, unto it. So there are countries that look upon us mm. and our voice is very important. Okay. Secretary General, here's a, I'm going to try and sum up. You called me a bearer of bad news. But that doesn't mean that we are unable to acknowledge something that is being done and when the president points out that there's a war going on in Russia, he calls it a war in front of President Putin who has called what he's doing in Ukraine a special operation. That's got to be acknowledgement on the part of our president that he has called a spade a spade. Second of all, he says the children who have been taken away must be returned. That's partly the reason why President Putin uh, is indicted for war crimes in Ukraine. That's something that the president has got to be commended for because he has called a spade a spade. But he's also been on the ground in Ukraine. He has seen the decimation with his own naked eye. And I'm asking you the question. Why should our economy be held hostage by indecision over whether or not to allow this person to come to South Africa or not? It should be a simple decision for President Ramaphosa, should it not? The, the decision about the President of Russia to come to South Africa or not, you look at all options on the table. It's not a simple decision. Um, it's not a simple decision um, for our country. It's not a simple decision for BRICS, which we are part of. And this year we are hosting. It's not a simple decision. Um, equally, in the interest of peace and what we want to achieve in terms of Ukraine-Russia uh, standoff or war, it is important that... Uh, Every avenue must be exhausted uh, to deal with the possibility of uh, ensuring that uh, uh, this matter is amicably resolved, uh, if there is such a possibility. But uh, we are signatory to ICC. We have said that over and over again, and that our government must act in the interest of its citizens, must act in the interest of its integrity, uh, in relation to us being signatories of the ICC so what's and difficult? the implications of that to us as a nation. Like I said to you, it's not an easy decision. One plus one is equals two. You've got to look at the mathematics of the issue in terms of saying uh, if the president of Russia comes or not come, uh, is there a possibility that uh, many things could actually happen around that? Uh, an amicable solution could be reached around that uh, in the interest of uh, the BRICS meeting and all of that the government will look at all of those things and I'm, I'm perfectly sure that our president is applying his mind and his cabinet when is the decision matter. going to come? leave it to government, they will BRICS is in when? August or October? August yes, they will come back to you it doesn't matter uh, uh, what happens and all of that, they will come back to you. The, 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 the point is that, uh, Koli, is that um, uh, you've got to put trust to the leadership of the country, having realized such in the past. Ramaphosa as a president 
is not uh, a person who rush uh, to a decision. He look at all angles and his cabinet, and he doesn't act alone. And he acts with others. At least that, by now, you need to know about the man. I which do. he has been heavily criticized, depending on which side of issues you stand on, mm. that it takes time and all of that. Mm. But he does act. And I'm very happy, and that's why... Uh, for you to acknowledge that a president sitting in a train for 11 hours between Poland and Ukraine squeezed in the name of peace. Nobody has ever spoken about it. And a couple of presidents in Africa doing that for peace, that must be acknowledged and celebrated. Well, it can only be celebrated if they do manage ultimately to bring they want, the warring sides. They want on their own. We still have got that platform called you and we've got nothing without it. But this contribution is it's very important. Start. Nobody has ever touched the ground, both sides, other than ourselves and Africa in particular. And, and in that, that is why, and that's why it's important very good. to acknowledge. Even China only went to Russia. They didn't go to Ukraine. Our uh, uh, colleagues and uh, uh, our allies, China, playing a very critical role, didn't take side, but they've never reached Ukraine. We did. Okay. Let's come back home. 2024 elections are upon us. Who will be the face of the ANC in the 2024 elections? Uh, President Matamela, Cyril Ramaphosa, will be the face of the ANC. How can you be so sure when the public protector, the Reserve Bank, the Hawks have not released their findings or their the conclusions if, of investigations me, of let, the Pala Pala. Let me answer you quickly. If yes. they release adverse findings on the president, the ANC will not run short of the alternative. That's why I'm asking you the question. I'm saying to you, the ANC will not run short of the alternative if the, re the results of those commissions or law enforcement are adverse on the president. The ANC has got to act on that. The ANC will act. The the ANC will In other words, the president will step aside. If they are adverse on him mm. and uh, it requires that he must step aside, he will do so. Ramaphosa has never cleaned to power, okay. has never had difficulties even of uh, uh, exploring that particular decision. If anything of that sort come up, but you have, have said that uh, I'm innocent and nothing wrong has actually happened in terms of Palapala. And so that is why the ANC have taken... The posture it has taken on the matter. Allow the processes to come to their finality uh -huh. and then not one at the expense of the other, all of them. And this is why perhaps the final question to you has to do with whether or not you are at a point of frustration. I mean, look at the public protector, at least the acting public protector, I should say. She's being heckled. She was heckled this past weekend because she has not released a report into Palapa. Should you not, as a governing party, be the ones that are calling for the release of this report? We will call on citizens to respect the public protector. We were very much patient with Mkwebani, and we never organized the skirmishes and uh, uh, block meetings to undermine her in public. We allowed her to do a job, even when she lost one case after the other and she tripped and undermine even the integrity of that office that she occupied. We respect it. Respect, uh, colleague. Don't do what other political parties are mobilizing, undermine. What you do to colleague, you will be forced to do tomorrow. This will then become a banana republic. Allow her to do a job. Don't organize skirmishes, meetings to boo her and all of that. Leave her to do her job. The same as we did with Mkwebana. Leave that woman to do her job. That's what is important. Political parties, citizens, respect institutions of the law. Even if they act at your own, against your own desire and interest, respect them. That's why even when the DA wins a case on deployment, we say we respect the bench. Okay.
That's what is important All about right. the rule of law, and we educate our citizens. And I will about remind it. you of this. I will of remind course. you of this. Of course. Right in the middle of an election campaign. Yeah. When the report is released. Let's when move on. When the report is released at the middle of the campaign, I can assure you there will be no crisis. If ever it has got adverse findings on the president, whatever it is that you guys think it will, all we are saying is the ANC allow the processes to run their course, okay. and then uh, we are not running uh, with a crisis at our table. We just came from a conference. We've got leaders elected. I've got two more minutes. Great. I, I need to put this question to you. Mm. A leadership vacuum at the public broadcaster, some observers will say, is an election boon for the ANC. Are you worried that there is once again a leadership vacuum at the SABC? The SABC has got a board now, mm. which must do their fiduciary duty and appoint a new CEO. Right. And then if they don't want uh, Madota Mkakwe, personally, not on behalf of the ANC, the man did a splendid job. And a salute to him. Mm -hmm. He did a splendid job. That place was in Tatus. He came in. Mm. Uh, it's not perfect. But he did what he could. And uh, why they couldn't retain him is not my call. Someone will say the same for Patisoma Kopeni to say she turned that newsroom from what it was and placed it where it is now. Of course, she's gone. Thanks to who? The man sitting across me? Of course, um, you, you, you may come at, uh, at it in different angles and so on. Patizwa is back. He's at the helm of SAPC uh, in terms of the board. Mm. And I hope she does a job as a board member. Mm. Not what she was doing there, meddling and the taking sides and all of that uh, in terms of uh, the SAPC. And I That's charged a serious her. accusation. Yes, I did charge at her when I was head of ANC elections because I think she represented no independence of uh, media uh, authority in that SABC. You can differ with me, but I'm still repeating it. I will respect you for what you stand for and uh, what you are interrogating and raising with me, unpalatable questions, but I will never question your bona fides. Partizo has made me to come to that conclusion the first day when I went to SABC uh, to see her with an editorial board leaking stuff about our discussions uh, and all of that. So I'm not here about Partizo. Uh, I did criticize her and uh, she was found uh, to be on the wrong side, including about Jesse Chouard. She was wrong. And uh, the, the cases she brought before against Jesse Duarte, ruled against her and proved that uh, she acted as an embedded journalist in the name of independence. She was not. She was not independent. And I, I charged at her, and the ANC called me to order at that time and said that uh, I must not do that, and I withdrew. But for all and what I came across about her, I've never seen somebody like that. I respect journalism. This country, you know, I've been to countries where journalists are suppressed thoroughly. But here in our country, there is Sanef, there's everybody. You will never do that. And uh, Sanef also criticized me. And then uh, I wanted to see them about it, but it was too late. And then she was gone. Look, unfortunately, she's not here to speak for herself. Of you course. have made very serious allegations I did her. in it's the only past. Fair. It's yeah. only fair for us. If you, indeed you, you started she, it. it if, if, yeah, indeed I started it, but yeah. I'm saying, yeah. if indeed yeah. she feels slighted, I'm going to have to give her the opportunity. If you to call her Mpi Telina and then so that I can put my side of the story. I will not do Mpi Telina. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Koli, for having me. Of the African National Congress. Thank you. Malula. Thanks indeed for your time. All right.